मॉर्निंग लंच एम आई ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस ओके माय स्क्रीन इज आल्सो विजिबल राइट यस so in our last session we have discussed what is model how to create model and what should be there inside model right so, and we discussed that as part of a model we need to create some classes which is going to hold the data right for a data in memory which can also be used by the view also we have discussed as part of the model we need to write the business logic we need to write the data access logic as well as we need to write the data validation logic so that is what all about model and the model can be used by both the controller as well as view right so and we also discussed that how we can use model inside our view and then we have discussed what is controller what is the role and responsibility of a controller what are controller action methods how many controller we can create in our asp.net core mvc application and we have also discussed that the controller is inherited from the controller class that the controller class is inherited from the controller base class and that controller class provides some methods like uh, provide some properties some methods right that we can use directly in our application and we have also discussed that how we can create uh, uh, in dynamically how we can create a dynamically uh, one instance of a class and how we can invoke the member of a class dynamically using the concept called reflection right and we also discussed that uh, uh, internally the dot net core framework makes use of a controller activator interface or you can say default controller activator class to create an instance of a controller and to invoke an, uh, the method right and for that purpose it is making use of uh, create method as well as a release method right and if you are working with asynchronous operation then it is making use of a create async method that is what we have discussed in our last session today what we are going to discuss first of all we will discuss what is view right once you discuss what is view then next uh, what we are going to discuss uh what we can say asp.net core dependency injection design button and with that uh, we will conclude our uh, mpc setup right how we can uh, create uh, how we can convert asp.net core mt application into mpc application how we can add the model view controller uh, how we can implement dependency injection right all these things once you complete then i will show you how you can create right do we need to write all these things manually do we need to create the controller the models the views folder manually in our mbc application do we need to set the mbc services and the request processing pipeline uh, that is the middleware component into our application manually is there any other options yes there is other options available what is that other option we need to use the model view controller template right then i will show you one example where i'm going to create the model the asp.net core mbc application using the model view project uh, uh, model view controller template and from that one more right from today on the, from tomorrow onward whatever application we are going to develop we are going to develop the application using the model view controller template then i will show you what is the file and folder structure of the application default file and folder structure if we are implementing or if you are creating one uh, application sp.net core web application with the mpc model uh, mpc project template then what is the default folder structure and most probably whatever folder structure we are going to discuss mostly we have already discussed all the uh, those components uh, before to that project right and you will understand that uh, what is the default folder structure and you should not be aware or know aware about any of the component right but why because we have already discussed all those individual components right so let us start today's session what is a view so as we discussed already view is one of the component of a model view controller join pattern and the view component is basically going to represent the model data to a user right through an interface which uh, with using which the end user can interact right we have already discussed this thing right so technically uh if we speak in asp.net core mbc application view is nothing but uh, one file with dot cs html extension right dot cs html extension if we are using c sharp as the programming language if we are using VB, then the extension is going to be VBHTML. 
So what exactly this is dot CSA HTML means? It is the combination of a two things. Here the first term CS represents C# and the second term is nothing but your HTML. That means the view file in ASP.NET Core MBC application is the combination of C# plus HTML. Right. That means the view, right? The razor view engine. What we are going to use inside that. CS HTML5, it is also possible to say view means definitely HTML uh, code will be there, right? The whatever HTML uh, code you want, right? Text box, control, form, everything you can write. But apart from that, this CS HTML file allows us to write some C sharp code, right? And it is very easy, right? It is very easy. You can sweep, right? Uh, from C sharp to HTML, from HTML to C sharp. And that is the beautifulness of our. CS HTML file which is provided by ASP.NET Core Framework and this is possible because it is going to use something called Razor Syntax, right? What is Razor Syntax, right? What are all the syntaxes available to write the CS HTML file? We'll proceed, proceed, proceed. We'll discuss those things one by one, right? Now let us first understand what is the role of view in MVG application, right? As we already discussed, the one and only responsibility for view to represent the data, right? Whatever data we have with our model, and if we want to represent those data to the user, then we need a view. And using this view only, the user going to interact with our application. The, inter the user is not going to see what is the controller. The user is not going to see what is the model we created for our application. What the user is going to see on his browser, only the UI component, right? Whatever the HTML or CSS code we have written in our CSS HTML file, that will be converted to HTML and that HTML is going to be rendered on the client browser, right? And that client browser is nothing but that in user interface will come and using which uh, or using that interface, the user is going to interact, right? And whenever the user going to click on any button, right? Uh, whenever changing the drop down list or any any kind of activity the user uh, going to do in the user interface, immediately whenever he submits the request, that request is going to be handled by the controller only, right? And the guys remember. As, uh, as I have already discussed, uh, inside the view, we can have we can have the ability to write the C sharp code. But the C sharp code, whatever we are going to write, it should be related to displaying the model data. It should not be related to any other logic. You should not write any business logic in a view. You should not write any calculation logic in a view. You should not write any data access logic inside a View. What logic you need to write inside a view? Only the logic which is related to presenting the content or displaying the model data. That, that logic only we need to write inside a view. No other logic. Right? Then where we placed views in MBC applications, right? So basically, basically uh, right, as you know, right, the default when this ASP.NET Core MBC application is nothing but Configure convention over configurations. Convention over configuration. What we mean by convention over configurations means that it is uh, it is uh, providing some default configurations, right? That what we need to follow while we are developing the applications. Like what is the default convention or configurations? What we need to follow. Like as you already discussed, models can be created anywhere. It can be created within the models folder, any other folder you can also create. You can create a separate, a separate class library project. There you can also put the model. But what is the convention provided by ASP.NET Core MBC application? If you want to create better, put all the model inside the models folder. Similarly, what is the default convention or configuration we uh, followed for controller? Now, if you want to create a controller, then first of all, create a controller folder at the application root directory. And within that controller folder, whatever controller is required, please create them inside that controller and please inherit your controller class from the controller, uh, right? Whatever user defined controller you are creating, please inherit that class from the controller base class. That is what we are following. Similarly, for views, what we need to do. Right. We need to create a folder called views at the application root directory. And then within that views folder, we need to create uh, a specific folder whose name is same as the 
controller. What it means? For example, if I'm having home controller, then I need to create a folder called home inside the views folder. For example, I'm having a student controller, then I need to create a folder called student inside the views folder. Right? And then based on the number of action methods, right, you need to create that many number of views whose name is same as the action method. For example, let's consider I'm having the home controller and within the home controller, I'm having these three action methods. And I'm having another controller, student controller. And inside the student controller, I'm having these four action methods. As you already discussed, I can put all these seven in, uh, action methods inside a uh, single controller. But that doesn't make any sense. As we already discussed, the related action method should be put inside a single controller, right? On related method, right? In this case, student get student details, get student list, edit student, audit student, add student. These are related to student only, right? So for that purpose, we can put all these operations inside the student control. But about us, contact us, index space, this is not related to student. Why I should put all this inside student or these four methods, right? Is to get student details, edit student, delete student. These are not related to your home control. Why I should put in, uh, them inside the home controller? So only the related actions, right, which are related to that particular controller should be put inside that controller, right? It should not be uh, put uh, or you should not put everything inside a single way. If you put, you will not get any error. But for the maintainability purpose, for the enhancement purpose, right? You should keep the, them uh, where it should be there, right? You should not put everything inside a single controller, right? So if your home controller contains these three action methods, and if your student controller contains these four action methods, then what should be the folder structure of your application? As I mentioned, first of all, you need to create a folder called views. And then for each controller, you need to create one one folder. So you can say, this is my views folder. Inside the views folder, I'm having this home folder. And also I'm having this student folder. And for each action method, I need to create one that says HTML file, whose name is same as the action method. So here you can see the action method name is about us, contact us, index. So you can see here I'm creating about us.cshtml, contact us.cshtml, index.cshtml. And here I'm having index details, edit and delete. And inside the student controller, I'm creating this four action method. So this is the folder structure that you need to follow while creating your MVC application. Clear guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. Let's see. If you are creating a SP.NET Core MVC, uh, uh, SP.NET Core web application using the model view uh, controller project template, by default, uh, that folder structure will be there. The view folder is there, shared folder is there, any other uh, default templates which are required by your application that are also there. But let me, what I will, I'm trying to explain as we are discussing everything from the scratch, right? As we are creating everything from the scratch, let us also do the same thing for this last component of our MVC application, that is the views. So first of all, create one application with the name Fastcore MVC application, open uh, Visual Studio 2022. Click on the create a new project. Right here, you can filter your uh, requirement, whatever language, whatever environment, what kind of application you want to create, and then select ASP.NET Core empty project template. Provide the application name, whatever name you want. Select the location, solution name. You can keep same as the project name. If you don't like, uh, you can give a different name. Now I'm going to give a different name. Right, MP. Uh, MVC web application. I'm giving a different now. In this case, what will happen? The solution name is going to be MVC web application, and inside this solution, this first core MVC web application project will be there. Click on the next button, select the uh, .NET target .NET framework. As we are targeting .NET 6.0, so you have to select this one. As I want to access the application using both HTTP and HTTPS protocol, then I am I'm I'm taking this checkbox. 
and then uh, I don't want, uh, right, I, I want that program class and main method in my application because I generally prefer to put that uh, standard uh, convention, right, the namespace, the class name, then the method, that particular structure I generally prefer to use. So I'm uh, checking this checkbox. If you don't want this one, if you uh, write, if you want only to write the directly code, right, then you can uh, uncheck this checkbox. It is completely depend on you, but there is no proper front difference and no difference uh, in execution point uh, from the execution point of view, right? So I'm checking this checkbox and click on the create button. So once I click on the create button, then you will see this is the default project structure, right? And there is no uh, model folder, no controller folder, and no view folder. Everything we are going to do manually. Right. So once you have done this, then the first step is to set the MVC request processing pipeline. So as you already discussed, so setting the MVC uh, in our ASP.NET Core application, it is a two-step process. So what is the step? First of all, what you need to do, you need to add the required MVC services. So in this case, did you want to be, uh, select? Uh... Linux as the operating system. Sorry. In while creating this, you selected Docker something, and then you select. No, I have not select. I have not selected Docker as of now. But it was saying Linux as the operating system. No, no. See, if you are using Docker, then in that case, see where you are seeing that. I just want to know. I have not uh, even discussed anything related to Docker till now. And I have uh, intentionally, I have not discussed this, that one, right? So once you select okay. this Docker, then you will see where you want to use. This Docker you want to use on Windows or Linux, that operating system you need to select. But I have not okay. yet discussed anything related to Docker. And they, and I have already told you that I am not going to discuss some uh, anything related to Docker. Once time will come, then at the time I am going to discuss. Right. Once okay. you check this checkbox, then you have the ability where the Docker server is on the Linux machine or on the Windows machine. That's what you need to provide here. So, but, but don't uh, put your mind inside this Docker concept as of now. Right. Okay. So you can say uh, to configure the mod MVC application, first of all, you need to write the MVC framework services. And then you have to write the MVC middleware component, right? To use routing is mandatory because it is going to route, right? It is going to, this routing is nothing but you can consider it is a pattern matching mechanism which will map the incoming URL to a particular endpoint. And whatever endpoints it maps, that endpoint is going to be executed by this use endpoint routing. And here for endpoint routing, what we are using, we are using map default controller route. So this map default controller route will provide the default routing pattern, right? And what is the default routing pattern. Now, what is the default routing pattern? It's nothing but your controller name slash action method name. And if you go to the definition of this method, then it is also going to show you the same thing. Right click, go to definition, right? And you can see the default pattern is nothing but your controller action and index. Again, uh, this uh, routing concept we will discuss in detail after one or two classes, right? So once we have done this, then what we need to do, right? We need to create the controllers folder, right? Until and unless we are not creating any controllers, then how we can create the views? Because the view for within the views folder, we need to create a, a folder whose name is same as the controller name. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to create two controllers. And before creating the home controller and student controller, first of all, I need to add the controllers folder because all the controllers are going to be created inside the controllers folder right let me add this controllers and within this controller let me create two class files one is home controller and another one is a uh, what i can say student controller home controller dot cs right and the next one is our student controller Right. So we have created the our, give me one minute guys.
So we have created the controller, right? So once you create the controller, this is your home controller. And inside this home controller, you can see uh, action result index method, right? So this is my home controller. And inside this home controller, you can see this action result slash index method, right? With these changes, now run the application and see what happens. So I'm running the application. So what is the default controller and action method of our, uh, our application? The default controller action method is what? Guys, what is the default controller action method is going to be executed if you do not specify anything? Index. Action right. index. Home, home, home controller and index method. Index right. so method. Home and index. But when I run this application, then what I'm getting? Right. So basically, I'm getting one exception. And what exactly this exception is saying? Now, whatever the index action method is, I'm looking for, I'm not finding that index action method, right? Inside the following three locations. What are the location? Now, in this case, that index.cshtl file is being sourced inside the views slash home slash index.cshtml. It is not found there. Then it is sourced. So views slash here dot index.cshtml. Again, it is not found the index.html file inside this location. And then it is something pages class share.index.cshtml. That means that means whenever we run the application under whatever the location, right, it is first going to search the specified location wherever the view is there. I mean, specified in the sense of whatever the controller, inside that controller only it is looking for the index.cshtml file. That is the controller name here. In the, what is the controller name? Home. So it will first give the priority to home folder. If it is not found, then it will go and check the shared folder, if, uh, right, which is inside the pages folder. If it is not found, then it is, will go and check the pages, pages last year. So this is basically, uh, this is basically whenever we, you, whenever we with our uh, sb.net core razor pages application. And here it is clearly saying that the view index was not found. The following locations were being searched. What location? View slash home, view slash share, and pages slash share. And in our application, we have not created any view folder. We have not created any home folder or any CSS HTML file. And this is the reason why we are getting this error. So whenever we run the application, so it will look for the views in the following three locations. First, it will look view slash home, then it will look view slash shared, and then it is look view slash, uh, oh, sorry, pages slash shared. If the requested file is found in any of the given locations, right, then that view is going to be executed, right, and that view is going to generate the HTML code, and that HTML, generate HTML code is sent back to the client who initially made the request. Guys, give me one minute. Right. Yes. So, so basically, whenever we run any application, and whenever we request for one action method, and if that action method returning a view, then in this following three locations, the view file is going to be sourced. And if it is found, then from a, from any one of the location, right? If it is found inside this view slash home folder, then it will not look for the next two locations. From there only, it will return the view. If it is not found here, then it will go to the next location. If it is found there, then it will execute, else it will go to the next location. And if it is found here, then it will execute, else from here, it is going to return that error message. And that is what uh, we are seeing in the application. So let us first create the in this view, right? As we discussed, so what we need to do, we need to create 
a huge folder in our application first, right? Every view what we are going to create it, they should be created inside the views folder, right? So for that purpose, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a folder called views. And inside this views folder, we need to create the, right uh, the home controller related action method, home controller related views. We need to create student controller related views. So for home controller related views, we need to create another folder and inside that uh, another folder with the name B, home. And if you want to create student controller related views, then you should put them inside the student folder, which should be inside the views folder. So I'm creating this student, right? So now inside this home folder, I need to create the index.cshtml file. I want to create the view. So for that purpose, what you need to do, just right click on the view folder. Right, where you want to create the view. I want to create this index view inside the home folder, right? Because this is home controller. So right click on the home folder, add view, right? And here you have two options. If you want to create an empty view, then you can go with this one. If you want to create a reserve view, then you can also go with this one. So what is the dif difference between these two? If you are going with this reserve view syntax, let me add the reserve view, right? So I'm putting the name as index.cshtml, right? Then in that case, it will not ask you to give anything, right? It will not ask you provide the, uh, what I can say. Uh, okay, so in, the, in this case, it is not asking you to uh, put any information related to the view. Means what? Now, do you want any model to be available as part of this view? Do you want to use any kind of layout pages? Do you want to create this view as a partial view? No options is going to be asked. In that case, it is going to simply add a view inside your home folder. And any code you want to write, write that you can write inside this folder. Sorry, inside this CSS HTML file. This is completely an empty template, right? I'll show you the other option also, right? Now you can see, I'm making one, uh, right? So if you want to write any C sub code, then for that purpose, you need to use this add the red symbol, right? And add the add red open curly braces and close curly braces. So within this add the red and open and close curly braces means it is going to create a block. And inside this block, you can write any C sub code, right? And what code I have written, I'm making that I'm not going to use any kind of a layout in this project, right? What is layout? How to use layout? What are the uh, uh, things that you can put inside a layout? We'll discuss all these things as we progress, right? But now, you just remember, we have created one view. And what uh, we have written inside the view, we are just using one H1 tag and writing that index view belongs to views slash home folder, right? With this changes in place, now if you run the application, then you will see that this index view uh, right, index.css by what we have created that is being executed and we are seeing the output in the screen, right? So this is how you need to create the view. Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now what we need to understand, right? If you look at the student controller, then we are using this view method, right? To return a view from our action method. So in this case, what will happen? Now this return view statement. So whenever I'm written view means it is nothing but one method. And whenever I'm calling this method, means what will happen? So it will execute this code. It will execute this code means it will generate this HTML code. This gen uh, generate this HTML and this HTML then sent back to the client who initially made the request by this controller, right? So in this case, this home controller will return this HTML file to the client and the client can see this output and what you can see now in the browser, right? So now we need to understand what exactly this view method, what are the different overloaded version available of this view? method. If you go to the extension, right, then you will see there are many overloaded version of the view method. And currently, you can see there are four overloaded version, right? As, you, as I told you, I will discuss all these methods one by one as you progress in this session, right? Not in this session, in this course. And everything, right? What is view back, view data, temp data, this four parts of view, this partial result, view component, JSON, everything we are going to discuss one by one. But now 
we need to keep focus on this formula. So what is this view view or view name object model and the view name object model? As you can see, there are four overloaded version of this view extension method, right? So if you open this view result, then what exactly this, right? So basically, what exactly it is saying, now whenever you want to execute, right, whenever you want to execute a view whose name is same as the uh, action method name, then in that case, you can use this action, uh, you can use this overloaded version. Whenever you want to execute one view whose name is same as the action method, and that view, if it doesn't take any kind of input parameter or any kind of, if the view is not taking any model object, then you can use this overloaded version, right? So if you look at our home controller, in that case, am I passing any model data to the view? Any, any parameter I'm passing to the view? No, I'm not passing any parameter. Am I passing any view name to this view? No, I'm not passing any view name. So in that case, what will happen? Now in that case, it will look for a view whose name is same as the action method name, that is index.cshtml. Clear, guys? This view extension method? Yeah. Right? Yes. So, then what is the use of this one? Now, whenever you're, suppose, suppose you are in the index action method of a home controller. You don't want to execute that index action method. Rather, you want to execute some different action method. Then in that case, you need to pass the view name. And for that purpose, you need to use this second overloaded version. So here, by default, whatever the action method name, that is going to be executed. In this case, if you want to provide a different action method, for example, I don't, I'm not, I'm not interested to execute this index. I want to execute the text action method. Then I can provide this. And in this case, this text action method, which is present inside the home controller, right, the home folder, that is what going to be executed. If it is available inside a different folder, then we have to provide the absolute part. How to provide the absolute part? How I can execute a different action method? Uh, different view. We'll see everything practically. But for now, let's concentrate on this one. So this means the same. The view name is going to be same as the action method name and no model data. In this case, the uh, view name, whatever the view you want to execute, right? That view name you need to pass, right? And, and this overloaded version means what? Now, in this case, if we, the view name is same as the action method name, but the view is expecting some model data, then in that case, you need to use this extension method. And what about this one? Now, in this case, if you want to execute a different view with model data, then in that case, you need to use this one. Right? So there are basically four overloaded versions and each over, so basically this overloaded version means if you want to execute the action, uh, if, you, if your view name is same as the action method name, you need to go with this one. If your view name, right, is different than the action method name, then you want to execute this one. If your view name is same as the, same as the action method name, but you want to pass some model data, then you need to use this third method. And if your view name is different and you also want to pass a model data, then you need to execute this second overloaded version. Clear, guys? Right. We are, we are passing two parameters, view name and model both, right? Not only model, the second one. Right. So any, any, this is completely different. So, so you just tell me, when you need to use the second method, when, whenever we want to pass the view name and the model both at the same time. Yes, yes. yes. So what is your query? I don't know, understand what is your query. What exactly you want to know? What is your doubt? No, no doubt. Just you said that. Uh... Yeah, I said I didn't say that's fine. But if you are having any doubt, then you can ask me. But... But don't explain me the concept, right? So this is the view name object. If you understand, that is fine. If you are not understanding, then ask me the question. And don't explain the concept because it is wasting time for others as well. Right? 
So any any doubt related to this concept, what exactly happening in this case? What exactly happening in this case, right? How to use that? Definitely, I'm going to show you all this work. But first of all, you need to understand this concept. Clear? Right? Yeah. 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 Right? So uh, to understand this thing, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a different uh, file name, whose name is text.cshtml inside this home folder. Right? Let me stop the debugging. Close this one. Close this output window. Add view. So before I have used this reserve view syntax, now uh, I'm uh, uh, reserve view empty. Now I'm going to use this reserve view, right? So once you click on this button, Right. What is the name you want to give? I want to give the name as a text. I don't want to use any kind of a template and I don't want to use any layout page. I don't want to create it as a pastel view, right? And if you are providing template, then definitely you need to provide the model classes, right? And in this case, I'm not going to use any kind of a model classes, right? Uh, once we discuss, once we proceed, we'll discuss how to use model, how to use a different kind of a template. You can see, create, delete, uh, all these things are uh, possible, right? Everything we are going to discuss. Right now, click on the add button. Okay, one question here. So how the view connected to the web browser? View is not connected to the web browser. What I told earlier, okay, in this case, this is the controller, right? Yeah. So in this case, when this statement is executed, it is actually rendering a view, right? Rendering a view means in this case, this test.cshtml file is going to be executed. And once this file is executed, it contains both C sharp as well as HTML code. So it will combine both the reserve view engine will come into the picture and he will generate the HTML content. And that HTML content is sent by this action method, right? Via the web server to the client who initially made the request. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Right. So if you see that diagram, what we discussed in MPC design pattern, Okay, let me open that diagram also. Right? So client makes the request to controller. So in this case, request is comes to this controller action method. Action method, if required, work with the model and then it selects a view. Once the view is executed, HTML content is generated and that HTML content is going to return by this action method right into the client and in this case you can see this view component once executed it will generate the html it is not going to render on the browser because this is a CSS html file it contains both the c sharp as well as html code but in the browser you will not find any c sharp code and uh, in this case we are using my reserve view syntax right it will combine both generous to html this html is returned to the client via this controller component clear Yes, sir. But view uh, connected to the controller as well as model, right? Hey, sorry? Uh, in this diagram, view connected to the controller as well as model, right? So you have attended that session when I am explaining this concept or not? Uh, no, no need. I will, I will watch. You missed, that, you missed that introduction to MBC session or you attended that session? First of all, you just tell me. Because we are talking about the views, that's why I'm asking that. No, no, I, I'm, no I'm, I'm talking about, did you attend that session, that introduction to MBC? Yeah, I attended, but I don't remember. Then, so then, to... uh, then, then just to watch the recorded session first. Because I have explained this concept in detail. Why the view is connected to the model by taking the example. Right? Please go and watch the session. And if you are having still any doubt related to any existing session, ping me. We are having separate doubt clearing session on weekends. I can uh, give some allocated, allocated time to you and you can attend the session. And in that time, whatever your query, you can clear. Because in this case, time, if I'm going to explain this concept, then it would be time of waste for other members, right? Yeah, whatever okay. I'm explaining right now, if you are having some doubt, you can. But if you are having doubt to, for uh, your existing classes, you can ping me and I will allocate some time, right, uh, which you are on this weekends and you can attend the session. Okay, sure. Right? 
So in this case, uh, you can see I'm having uh, two, uh, what I can say, I'm having uh, two views inside my home folder. Now, from this index action method, I don't want to execute index view. I want to execute the text view. So if I want to execute the text view, then what I need to do, I need to provide the relative path. Relative path means uh, it is going to start with the working directory. Working directory in the sense this index action method means the working directory for this home controller is home folder. Right. And from this home folder, it is going to execute the text method, right? So this is so, so see guys, can, can anybody tell me what is the difference between absolute path and the relative path? So in absolute part, it, it will call index.cshtml. Oh no, I'm not and talking it... about what which which file it is going to call. Right. First okay. of all, whatever you said, it is completely wrong. It is going to call the index.cshtml file. That is completely wrong. Can anybody tell me what is the difference between absolute path and the relative path? Yeah, so, so in relative path, it will it will look the path with respect to its current location and current directory, current, current directory. Current directory, yeah. Right. And yeah. in the uh, absolute path, it is start from the root directory, root directory of your application. So in this case, for this example, uh, whatever text I'm passing means uh, it will look for the working directory, right? And the working directory or current directory in this case, home folder. And what is the absolute path? Absolute path is nothing but your root application, this uh, fast core MBC web application. This is nothing but it is your absolute path. And this is nothing but your relative path. Right. So in this case, whenever you are using the relative path, you do not need to provide the view extension. In this case, you do not need to provide the dot CSS table. Right. That is the point you need to remember. Whenever you are using a relative path, then you do not need to provide the extension. But if you are going with the absolute part, that is also I'm going to show you, right? In that case, you need to provide the file extension, right? So in this case, I'm providing the relative path. So I do not need to provide the file extension. In this case, once I execute this method, so which view is going to be rendered? Whatever the view name I have specified, right? And currently, if you go to the definition, then you will see it is using the second extension method, right? And if you expand the name, then right, it is saying the name or path of the view that is rendered to the response stream, right? So in this case, whatever the view name you specified, that view name is going to be rendered to the response stream, right? So in this case, what view it is going to render? It is going to render the text.cshtml view. So let me do one thing instead of using that cluster server, let me change to IIS Express. I don't want that file to be generated again and again. Right, so let me run the application and you will see we are not getting any data. Why I'm not getting any data? Okay. Okay, let me clean the solution. Did we put anything? Oh, we have not added any content inside this view. Right, so let me copy this one. Right, so I have added one H1 tag inside the view. Right, now run the application once more. And uh, you can see the text view is coming from view slash home folder. Clear, guys? Yes. Right. So now, instead of this uh, relative path, you can also specify the absolute path of your view, right? And whenever you are providing the absolute path, then what you need to do, you need to provide the view with its extension, right? So now, where the view is there. So I'm providing the, uh, what I can say, absolute path. Absolute path means this is the root directory, right? And inside this directory, first of all, you need to specify the folder name views. Within this views folder, what folder is there? Home. And inside this home folder, this is test.cshtml file is there. So if you are providing the relative path, only view name is enough. But if you are providing the absolute path, then you have to provide the uh, uh, I, I, I mean, you have to provide the extension also, right? Test.cs system. So in this case, you can use this in three different ways. What are the three different ways? You can use like this, you can use like this, or 
you can also use this uh, tilde line. So all these three are uh, going to be same, right? Means they are going to start from the application root directory and then they will look for the views folder. Inside the views folder, they will look for the home folder and inside home folder, they will look for this text.cshtml file. So now if you run the application, then you will also going to get the same output. So, this, so, so basically, if you are using a relative path, the application execution will start from the working directory, right? And in that case, you do not need to specify the extension. And if you are providing the absolute path, then it will start from the project root directory. And in that case, you have to provide the extension. What is the difference between a absolute path and a relative path? Relative path means the current directory or working directory. In that case, you do not need to specify the extension name or the folder name where the view is belongs to. But if you are using, right, if you are using the absolute part and in that case it starts from the root directory and in that case we need to provide the folder structure as well as the view name with the extension clear guys what is the difference between your absolute path and the relative path yes right uh, so case, if you use this then this is nothing but your absolute path right so this is nothing but your absolute path like this is relative path right and this one what i'm using here all these three options these are nothing but your absolute path uh sir what is actually the base url for relative path and absolute path can you please so so, uh, so what is base url there is no such concept called the base url so here you need to understand the directory Right? Don't consider about the base URL. Right? In this case, if the URL is indexed or say to invoke this action method, what should be the URL? URL should be home slash index. There's no such difference. Right? It doesn't matter. Uh, right? Whatever inside this action method, you are using this relative path or you are using absolute path. No matter. URL is going to be same only. The relative path means it will start looking from the current directory. And in this case, the current directory is home slash this. Absolute path means you have to specify the view name along with the extension. And in that case, you can say I have only specified text. And here I'm specifying text.cshtml along with I'm providing these things, right? Now do one thing. Even I have not tested this one, whether it is going to work or not. Let me do this in this way only. See what happened? Test dot CSTML. It will not work, right? And do one thing, right? Comment this one. Remove this extension. See? Understood? Okay. Right. So basically, if you are using relative path or absolute path, no matter, the URL is going to be same. If you are using relative path, you have to provide the view name only. And if you are using the uh, absolute path, then you have to provide the fully qualified folder structure with the extension. That is the difference between view or uh, right uh, relative path and absolute path. Any question from anyone else? Guys, clear? Yes. Yes. Right. So I have shown you two different ways to create the view. Another option is there. Right. That, that is also I'm going to show you. Right. So this is one uh, action method, index action method. So right click on this action method anywhere and select add view. And you will also get this option. Right. Suppose I'm using razor view then it will take the view name by default about because the action method name is about any template you want to use. No, I don't want to use any template model class. No, do you want to create this as a partial view? No, do you want to use layout file? No, and click on the add button. So in this way also, you can create the view. So in this case, you will see this about view is going to be created inside the home folder, which is inside the views folder. See, this about.cshtml is also going to be created. So this is how you can create the view in sp.net core MVC application, right? 
advantages means the already we have discussed separation of a consumption right it separates the user interface from the rest of the application right and uh, and what is the advantages of using this you can usually unit test your individual component right how does the model controller how does the controller action identify the view so basically it use uh, the concept called a view discovery right what exactly the concept view discovery now whenever we search uh, whenever we execute an action method then it will first look suppose whatever the uh, what i can say right if we are using this return view statement then in that case by default it will look for the view whose name is same as within the current directory then it will look in the view slash shared folder and then it is going to look the view inside the pages dot layer folder right so it doesn't matter if you implicitly written view result or view right and what is the default convention that what followed means this one so views controller name view name view shared view name pages shared pages name right and even you can also return the view like this one this is what we have already discussed optionally if you want you can put this last or till this last that is also fine we have already discussed these things right if you look already we have discussed so anything uh, related to view what is view how to create a view how the view is executed how to specify the view name right if the name is if we don't want to execute the same action method view name if i want to execute a different action method what are the different overloaded version yes i have discussed only two overloaded version here right but uh, which doesn't take any uh, what i can say model object but once you progress definitely i'm going to show you how you can pass uh, the model object to the view right to how you can use views how you can create strongly typed view model right what is exactly a view model all these things we will discuss uh, one by one but as of now it, uh, it's more than enough right what is view how to create a view how the view is executed how you can specify the view using relative path how you can specify the view using absolute path how you can specify a different view other than the view name whose name is same as the action method name clear guys yes right so today's main topic is not view right so today's main topic is dependency injection right as of now we are using services services right so in this case also you can see we are using some built-in services if you go so here we are adding builder the services touch add mbc method so in this case internally the dotnet framework make use of the service right the dependency injection so in this case we are adding this add mbc service to the iuc container that is dependency injection container and then we are using that service throughout our application but until and unless we are not creating our own service until and unless we are not using the service in our application we will not understand this concept right so for that purpose what i'm going to do i'm going to use uh, right i'm going to explain this asp.net for dependency injection design pattern uh, by taking uh, one example where we will create our own services, we will configure them and we will use them in our applications, right? So let us understand this thing, right? So first of all, uh, we need to create with the model folder and inside this model, please unmute guys, please mute yourself. Right? So first so, of all, what I'm going to Yes. Yeah, uh, so, uh, can I call one view, uh, suppose uh, in home can, uh, home views, okay, inside the home uh, views folder, can I call another view which is uh, in student view? In that case, there are other options are there, redirect to, uh, uh, redirect to action, redirect to route, right? So all these things we are going to, uh, as I already told you, it is possible, no issue. From this index action method, you can create a call uh, another index action method of another controller that is also possible right so we'll discuss them uh, as we progress but for now don't consider it uh, so much on those concepts right how i can call one action method to another action method uh, how i can call another action method from another controller right action method means internally that view is going to be used right that is what we are all going to discuss in our coming session right but for okay. now uh, only consider how to create a view how we can execute a view, that's it, right? Don't think uh -huh. much about the those concepts. Everything is uh, possible. Everything we are going to discuss as we progress in this. Clear? Okay. 
So now uh, I'm going to explain you what exactly dependency injection design for. So for that purpose, let me first create a model in our application, models folder, right? So once you create the models folder, let me create one class file with the name student.cs, right? So in, inside this class file folder, I'm creating one class file with the name student.cs and then I'm adding this uh, code, right? So you can see, I'm adding a uh, few properties within the student class. This is nothing but your student model, which is going to hold the student information, right? Next, what we are going to do, we are create, going to create the service classes, right? So service classes means I will create one interface, which is going to define what all operations you can perform on the student. But how to perform that it is not going to define. It is only going to define what all operations. So there is a difference between what all operation and how. Right? What all operation means it is only going to provide you the signatures. Right? It is going to only provide you the signature. But how this method are going to be implemented, that is going to be provided by the implementer class of this interface. As you can see, this interface means I'm going to provide two methods. One is get student by ID and another service what I'm providing is get all students. So basically I'm providing the option so that the user right uh, can get the student details by passing the student ID or the user can also get all the student information by calling this get all students method. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another class file which is going to implement this iStudent repository interface and also going to provide implementation for this two interface method. This is the simple inheritance concept, right? I'm not going, I'm not doing anything special. So it is simple inheritance OOPS concept, right? One interface having two method declaration, another class implementing that interface. So in this case, right, in real time, you will get the data from the database. But for now, I'm creating the data source uh, by doing some hard coded logic and this is my data source and this is get student by id method taking the student id and from this data source it is facing the first employee right by using the student id and in this case whatever data we are having with the within this data source all the data i'm going to return from this get student uh, get all student method right so in this case simply one record is going to be written from the data source whatever id we pass as input parameter and in this method we are returning all this data right so this is our implementation right and uh, then we need to configure the MVC services into the request uh, for our application. And we have already done this. Uh, we have added this add MVC services and we are using this uh, routing middleware component, right? So without a dependency injection, how you can implement this, right? So without a dependency injection means if I don't want to use dependency injection design pattern, then how I can do this? Now, if you go to your right which controller if you go to your home controller okay let me re uh, replace the home controller code with this one right if you go to home controller then you can see i'm having two action method one is the index action method another one is get student details by id action method so in this case i'm not using any kind of view if you want then you can view okay let me uh instead of this action result let me change this uh, uh, let me change change this to one action right uh, action result instead of json data what i'm going to do i'm going to do, i'm not going to return json so what i'm going to do i'm going to create uh, one view and that view is for this list of students so right click add view reserve view add right click index i want to implement this as a list and the model class is going to be student. I don't want to use any of this and I click on the add button. Okay. So already one file. Yes. Do you want to replace? Yes, I want to replace. Right. So you can see the information, right? That view is created, right? And inside this view, uh, uh, other things I'm going to remove. I don't want to create. Right. I don't want to provide all this edit details, all these things, right? So this view is created, right? What is markup syntax? I will discuss them separately, but for now, 
you can say this is my model right the model is nothing but my list of student and for that purpose you can say i enumerable of student and if you are wondering why this is happening right i am providing the fully qualified name of my uh, model right as i already told you you can use model and how it is going to use model like this so under it model and here you need to provide the or what you need to provide you need to provide the a model class name and in this case the model is going to be a simple class or a collection in this case it is going to be a collection for that purpose i'm using i enumerable of uh, that class name right and then what i'm using i'm using some uh, html helper method right you can see display name for what is html helper all these things we are going to discuss in our coming session but for now uh, and here you can see i'm using a forage loop as i already told you what is the uh, why you should use C sharp code inside a view only for rendering purpose? And in this case, I'm using this for each loop to render the model data into the view. And for this, how many number of students are there? For each student, this loop will execute and whatever the property name, right? That what I'm displaying here using display, using the display for property. So if you don't want to use this one, then you can also uh, write like this. If you like this one, then you can write item right dot student id then this is also possible if you are wondering what is this display for then you can also write like this right but both are going to be same right so this is our data index view which is going to display the student information right and the next controller is our get student so in this case instead of returning uh, uh, json data you can see return view and in this case i'm going to use the other overloaded version right which is taking all the student information right so you can see uh, if you go to the definition then you will see it is using the other overloaded version which is taking the object model name and the next one is get student details. I want to show the student details in the browser, right? Uh, for that purpose, I can also change this JSON result to action result. And instead of return JSON, I can write return view. And for this purpose, I'm going to create a view for displaying the student data. And for that purpose, I right click add view, select treasure view, click on the add button. And in this case, I am going to create reuse the details template. What is the advantages? The advantages is that the necessary code it is going to generate for me. Otherwise, I can write the code by my manually, but uh, in this case, I can see. And you can see what is the model. The model is this. The model namespace is uh, belongs to this one. And click on the add button. So once you click on the add button, it will create the get student details view. Right. And inside a details view, it will make use of the model. Right. And in this case, see, in this case, it is not using I enumerable. Why? Because one student information, it is not a collection. So one student information, so simply model. And in this case, using, see, whenever you are importing, creating the model, you have to use small at the rate M. Right. Whenever you are creating the model, you have to use small at the rate M. But whenever you are accessing the data, then at that time you need to use right capital M. For now, uh, let us understand. Right, I'm not going with uh, going through the code because you will not understand. But for now, you just remember it is displaying the model data, right? Uh, whatever the student information that is going to display in the view. Once you have this, right? Then what I'm going to do? I'm going to the home controller, and you can see how I'm accessing the data. So in this case, I'm creating an instance of a student repository, fetching all the data by calling the get all student method. In this case, also I'm creating the repository and I'm fetching the get student by ID method. And if you go to get all student details method definition, then you will see it is going to return the data source. And in this case, data source means this. Uh, uh, so you should make this method as private because uh, doesn't make any sense to make it as public. And in this case, I'm returning all this data. And whenever I call this get student by ID method, then you will see this piece of code is going to execute. And from this data source, right, it is going to return the student ID, whatever we pass as a input parameter. With these changes in place, if you run the application, then you will get the output as expected, right? So you can see all the student information it is displaying in the browser. So by default, this home slash index action method is executed home slash index if i pass this then this is going to be executed 
And the second method is get student by details by ID. And I want to, and here you can see ID. ID means I can pass the value for this ID parameter using the route data, as well as I can also pass the value for this ID parameter using the query string. Both options are possible, right? So let me first use this ID parameter as a query string. So I'm passing, uh, sorry, ID parameter as route data. I'm passing 102 and press the enter button. See, I'm getting the data, student ID, student name, and I, all these things. Instead of this, even though if you want, then you can also pass the query string ID equals to 101. So you can wow. see that student information I can get from here. Yeah, yes. One can you put uh, after get student details slash and 102 no, no, in the in the url in the url itself. in the url sorry yeah after details can you put slash after details slash 123 or something so we have already way... discussed this thing in this oh, case sorry. whatever core string parameter that will be taken sorry in no no what is the route data that will take the priority so we have okay. discussed this thing in our last session only Okay. Did you attend our last session? Yeah, yeah. But I think we have discussed this thing. If okay. I put both core string and route data. Then core uh, the route data will take the priority. Okay. Right. So in this case, this is how it is working as expected. Right. So we are getting the data as expected. What the? Can anybody tell me what is the problem with this implementation? Before uh, before I am explaining the problem. Anybody having any idea what is the problem with this implementation? Yeah, tight coupling. Yes, tight coupling. So tight coupling uh, means what? Now in this case, if you see the student repository class, right? And this is the, your home controller class. Home controller class is tightly coupled with the student repository class. So tomorrow, right? Uh, this is now a student repository, right? This this is a class student repository. Tomorrow, you want another implementer class, right? That is a test student repository. Now, instead of using student repository, you want to use a text uh, repository. So, in that case, again, in your application code is going to be changed, right? If you are changing the uh, dependent classes, right? Your uh, this uh, right the class which is consuming the services that class code is also going to be changed right now you have to come here and you have to use test student repository so so again and again I'm changing the repository right it, again and again I need to come here and again and again I need to do changes in my home controller class and this is nothing but tight coupling and we need to overcome this tight coupling behavior. How we can overcome this tight coupling behavior? Now, if you want to reduce the tight coupling between the two software components, in this case, two component means in this case, home controller is one component and the student repository is another component. Then if you want to reduce the tight coupling between two different repositories or two different software components, then you need to make use of a dependency injection design part. Right. So what is the dependency injection design button means that it is a process of injecting the dependency object into a class that depends on it. So what exactly it means that this is home controller class and this home controller class wants to use either the test dependency state student repository or student repository. Right. So you cannot use both at the same time. You have to use any one at any given point of time. Right now, what my requirement is. I don't want to create this instance here, but what? But but I want to use that instance here. Uh, trying to uh, uh, observe the point, I don't want to create an instance of a text repository inside this uh, controller class. But I want to use that uh, text repository inside this controller class. Is that possible? Yes, that is possible. How? By using the dependency injection design pattern. Sir, how it is possible using the dependency injection design pattern? Now, using this dependency injection design pattern, what we will do, we will create one constructor. Any, uh, so, I'm, I'm starting with the constructor. And to this constructor, I will pass the dependency object. And instead of using this dependency injection design pattern, I can create a private read only variable which type is i student repository uh, let me give this type as i repository and i can give the name as repository right and what i need to do i student so what is the name 
I student repository. And then what I'm going to do, I'm taking one parameter of a repository, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm creating, I'm going to create an instance of the student repository. But, but I, I, I'm not going to create an instance. I'm going to inject that instance. How? By using the controller. So I'm creating a, a, a student repository interface variable. And then I'm initializing that interface variable using the constructor of this controller. And somehow, while I'm creating an instance of this controller class, I will inject either the student repository instance or the, uh, what I can say, test student repository instance. And then I'm not going to use this uh, create statement. Directly, I can make use of this repository and I can access the data. Directly, I can make use of that repository. I can access the data. This is what I need to do, right? But now, if you run the application, then you will not get any data. You will get the error. Why error? Because you have created the controller. You have created the constructor. You you ex, you are expecting that the uh, this constructor should accept the text repository or uh, 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 test student repository or student repository. You are expecting, but it is not going to do the things manually. It is not possible that uh, I created the controller, I expect uh, and I assume that uh, the framework should provide. This is not, the assumption is not work in some software industry. Practical things is work, right? Then what is practical things in the sense, we need somehow, we need to pass that dependency object to this controller. Then how is that possible? And for that purpose, what we need to do, we need to go to the program class. And to this program class, we need to use something called right R. Right. See what is uh, uh, I'm going to explain. Right. So I'm going to use the. Uh, I'm just going to explain this thing. But later I will explain everything in detail. Now, now run the application. We are getting the data as expected or not. So what we are doing now here within this, who mute, who mute uh, their video, upper arm, please unmute your video. Yes, thank you. Right, so you can see in this case, see in this case, the, if you look at this add MVC method, this is a framework service, right? This is a framework service. And in this case, to this, uh, right, uh, even though it is a framework service, it is injecting to the built-in dependency injection container. This I ser services means I service collection where you can con uh, configure your services. And in this case, I am configuring my built in, uh, I, I'm configuring my user defined service. In this case, you can see the services that add singleton method. What is this add singleton method? What other methods are available? I will discuss them in detail. But for now, you can see to this services method, I'm calling this add service, add singleton method. And to this add singleton method, I'm passing what is my service type. And this service is implemented by what type? So I student repository is my service type and this I service repository is implemented by student repository class. Now, in this case, if you want, right, currently, if you see the student repository is uh, using and executing our code, right? And in that case, this controller class, whenever it execute, this controller, right, in this case, as it is using the I student repository as a parameter in this constructor, right? So what the SP.NET framework will do anywhere, right? Anywhere, any constructor is there inside any class. If that constructor taking this I service student repository as a parameter, then it is the responsibility of the .NET core framework to pass the instance of the student repository. Clear guys? 
Yeah. So uh, it is not. Please explain this again. It is not only see in see in this case, once you configured your student repository type, right? This is your interface, and this is your concrete class. This is going to provide what are the services available, and this is going to provide how the services are implemented. This is the interface, and this is the concrete class. So once you registered your services, right? While registering the services. So you have other method, but currently I'm using add single done, right? So once you can registering your services, while you are going to register the services, you need to provide what is the type, interface type, in this case, iStudent repository, and this interface is implemented by student repository, right? So both the type information you need to provide here. Once you do this thing, then what will happen now within your application, within your application, any class, Forget about controller. Controller is only a class only. Any user defined class you create, any controller, any user defined class, any model classes, anywhere, right? If the constructor taking the parameter of iStudent repository, then it is the responsibility of, it is the responsibility of .NET Core framework to pass an instance of student repository. And once you got past the instance, then whatever you want to do with that instance, you can do. And if you look at this example, this constructor of this home controller taking iStudent repository. So what exactly you want to do with this iStudent repository? I want to, whatever I want, I can do. So now I'm initializing that uh, whatever instance I'm getting with this private variable. And then once I initialize using that variable, I'm calling the method. So no issue. So if you take this code, right? If you take this code and if you go to student controller, right? Then also it is going to work in the same manner, right? So instead of action result, let me return uh, JSON here, right? Let me return JSON result and return instead of action, I'm going to use JSON and here return action and I'm going to use JSON, right? So now see, you can see. I'm using the same iStudent repository inside my student controller. I'm using the same repository inside my uh, home controller. Any class, any class which are having the constructor, right? By default, if the constructor taking the parameter of iStudent repository, then an instance of the student repository is going to be passed. And that instance, once you pass, you have to store it inside a variable. And once you store, then whatever you want, you can do. I'm accessing the get of student method. Now, if I execute the student controller, right, then also you will get the data as expected, right? So see what I'm going to do. So I'm passing student class index. So in this case, it is going to return me the data in JSON format, right? And now what is the second method? Get student details. So in this case, if I'm going to pass student details and I'm passing 10, then I'm going to, so 10 is no record. Right, so I need to pass a valid data. So 101, so I'm getting the data as expected. So this is how dependency injection design pattern works in .NET Core. Clear? Any dependency, uh, right? Uh, any services you want in your application, right? Instead, and uh, if you want in your application, you need to configure them using the built-in dependency injection container like this, right? Apart from this add singleton method, other methods are there. That is what we are going to discuss next, right? But for now, any question from anyone, how this dependency injection design button works in .NET application, .NET Core application? Uh, yes, sir, one question. So yes. this add singleton method will create the instance so, of uh, exactly uh, exactly so it is board. not uh, exactly it is going to create an instance and how long that instance going to be there in your application that lifetime is going to be also decided by this add singleton method. Apart from add singleton and add transient is there add scope is there right. If I'm using add singleton, what is the lifetime of the dependency object? If I'm using transient, what is the lifetime of the dependent object, dependency object, right? If I'm using add scope, what is the lifetime? That is what I'm going to discuss. But once you add singleton means that instance is going to be created, right? And in this case, that instance is going to be only one instance for whole application, right? No matter how many times you access, right, uh, your application, right? How many times you access the controller action method, 
right? The student controller action method, no matter, only one instance of this uh, singleton, uh, the student repository uh, class is going to be there, right? So it is something equivalent to your singleton design pattern. If you have any idea about singleton design pattern means we create an instance of a class and that instance going to be shared throughout the application. That shared instance is going to be used by everybody. And in this case also, if you use the single art singleton method, then this student repository instance is going to be created and that uh, instance is going to be shared, shared throughout the request, right? How many times you request, right? How many HTTP requests are coming? No matter, only one time this instance is going to be created and that instance is going to be shared between the request, right? Clear? And for that, uh, like we need to pass both the interface that we created and exactly. Class... So if you do not pass this interface, then how, right? If you do not pass this interface, right? If you look at our controller, are we, am I using any kind of concrete classes here? If I use concrete classes, then why I should go for this dependency injection? But if I use the concrete classes, there is a tight coupling, na? Today, I'm using this, if you look at this, I'm having two repositories, student repository and a test student repository. And in the program class, I'm configuring student repository. So currently, the student repository uh, instance will be there. And, and I change this student to text student repository. Do I need to do any changes in my controller class? No, because they are loosely coupled. Because I have not used that class name anywhere in my uh, controller. If I am using the concrete class name, then there is a tight coupling. If I am using interface, then there is no tight coupling. It is loosely coupling. Clear? And this uh, add singleton uh, method we need to use for each and every model class that we add. Uh, is why, that why, why you, sir? So in this case, I'm having the student model class. Am I add the student model class here? So first of all, you need to understand what is the service. Does the student class provide any method that you want to consume? Uh, I mean, uh, not like the student repository, whatever we use to iterate. Exactly, whatever, whatever repository you are going to create, for each repository you need to use, not add singleton. Based on the requirement, we have other method, methods as well. You, you have to co configure them like this. So if we add another uh, entity called like employee and then we create an employee repository, then again, we exactly. need to add one more add singleton exactly. method here. Exactly, exactly. For each service, you need to configure them here. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any question from anyone else? Uh, sir, if you uh, add two, two, same repository with two different clauses, it will like like, like this uh, no uh, yes like this yes yes okay do let me do one thing sir where is the test deposit deposit is there in the project solution store see i have created in the same here student repository here okay, okay. test student okay. repository right yes. so what i'm going to do um, This is student and this is test student repository. So I'm going to change the name. Test. Test. See, this kind of uh, uh, RND is not, you can do also by yourself. It is not a big deal. It is just we need to confirm whether it is working or not. If working, which one is taking the priority? That's it. Nothing much. Yes. See, James, it is taking, right? And if you go to the student class index method, then also it is taking the uh, gems. Gems means which one? The sure. first repository, first one, which you configured, right? Yes. Sorry, no, not the first one, the second one. Okay. Right? It is going to override the first one. If you comment this one, then it will make use of a, a text student repository, right? So if you comment this one, then it will make use of a text student repository. You can say text gems, right? So whichever is registered second, that will override the first one. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any question from anyone else? Uh, sir, Mr. Sadish. 
ஹலோ சார் த திங்கர்ஸ் அண்ட் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அந்த இன்டர்வியூ தேர் ஆஸ்கிங் அபவுட் தி சர்க்குல் சர்க்குலர் ரெஃபரன்ஸ் இன் டிபெண்டன்ஸ் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் சார் ஸோ ஹவு டு ஆன்சர் தட் கொஸ்டின் சார் சர்க்குலர் ரெஃபரன்ஸ் இன் டிபெண்டன்ஸ் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் சர்க்குலர் ரெஃபரன்ஸ் இன் டிபெண்டன்ஸ் இன்ஜெக்ஷன் எஸ் சார் Well, actually, uh, I am first time I'm hearing this uh, term from you, right? So, uh, this kind of interview question, so what I can suggest is, put this question on the Telegram group, right? Even I am not aware about some, some uh, new concept, right? Whatever you are asking, I am not aware. So, I need to Google okay, it, sir. I need to figure out exactly. And okay, even sir. though other people will also get benefit from this. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right? So, so, you can put these things in the Telegram. You have joined that uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, discussion. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, so sir, you can yes. put uh, even few people are uh, testing me yesterday also i got two three questions right i also asked them please put this question in the telegram okay, discussion sir. okay right sure yeah. thank you so so how this dependency injection design button work now this is your service in this case this service is nothing but your text repository or uh, text student repo- student repository or the text student repository the client in this case is nothing but your home controller and the student controller the student controller wants to consume some of the services provided by either text repository or text student repository similarly the uh, student controller right who is also a client who wants to consume some of the methods right provided by a student repository or a text student repository but if he creates an instance of a student or a text student repository then these two component are going to be tightly coupled so we don't want that tight coupling behavior between our controller and the repository so what we introduced we introduced the dependency injection design pattern so this injector is nothing but your dependency injection design pattern or dependency injector so in this case the dotnet framework what uh, dotnet core framework what they will do so they will look at your controller class they will check the constructor and and if they see if the constructor taking i uh, uh, student repository then what uh, instance what concrete class is registered that concrete class instance is going to be created and that instance is going to be injected into the client either into the whatever request is coming student controller or home controller the instance is going to be injected and that instance is going to be used by the student controller and the home controller to consume the services this is how the dependency injection design pattern work right now we need to understand the different method right we have discussed uh, one method that is a singleton so what exactly singleton means in this case the ioc container will create and share a single instance of the service object throughout the application lifetime right in this case if you are using this add singleton method then what will happen only one service instance is going to be created and that is going to be shared throughout the application lifetime so no matter how many request you are sending right no matter how many request you are sending no matter how many controller is consuming this i student repository right no matter the same single instance is going to be consumed by all the uh, what i can say by all the uh, requests the second thing uh, and for this purpose we are using add singleton method the second option is add transient so what will happen in this case in this case the ioc container will create a new instance of the specified type every time you ask for it right and the service can be added at transient using the add transient method right a lifetime can be used in stateless service right stateless service means if you are developing some kind of uh, restful services web ap then in that case you can make use of transient right and the scope scope means what now in this case the ic container will create an instance of the specified service type once per request and will be shared in a single request so to understand this what i am going to do i'm let, let me first explain this concept right so what i'm going to do i'm using add singleton i'm using add transient add transient and using add sorry add scoped right add scoped so in this case na each time so in this case one instance will be there for whole application in this case 
one request right uh, each time you ask it will create a request right for example inside this home controller class right currently i'm inside this home controller class from this home controller class i redirect to another uh, class right from this home controller class i redirect to another class if i redirect to another uh, class let's say from this home controller i redirect to student controller then again for this home controller this instance is going to be created uh, right and injected and for the student controller the same instance again going to be created and injected into the student controller that means every time you uh, go and check the controller uh, and if there is a constructor which is taking i student repository the every time it will create a new instance right and that is the meaning of your add transient method right that is the meaning of add transient method and what about this add scope? Add scope means what? Now currently I'm in the home controller class and from this home controller class, this constructor is executed and the instance is created. And from this home controller class, uh, after executing some logic, what I require, I require, I need to transfer this uh, uh, request to the student controller class. When it comes to the student controller class, again in the student controller class, the constructor is there, which is taking the student repository. So in this case, this is the this is the same request, right? Which is initially made, but for the same request, it is not going to create the instance again. So in that case, the, the instance is already created. That same instance it is going to use here, right? So basically, the point that you need to remember is if you use add singleton only one instance throughout the application. Add transit means each time a constructor taking the parameter, if you are executing that class, then that uh, object is going to be created. Add scoped means one instance for request. For request means if you, for a single request, if that uh, uh, I'm executing for a single request, I'm executing two controller. And if the two controller taking the I student repository as a parameter, then only one instance is going to be created. And in uh, and that is not possible in the case of add transit. If you use add transit, if the same request is going to be handled by two different controller, then in that case, two instances is going to be created. And in this case, only one instance is going to be created. Clear, guys? Hi, hmm. sir. Yes. So, if you add singleton means the application specific means uh, multiple requests coming, they're all multiple requests, same instance. So, so do you have any idea related to singleton design pattern? No. So singleton means what? Only one instance throughout the application. So you have any idea related to static class? Yeah, a little, not in deep. So, so little bit is very dangerous, right? Static class means mm -hmm. how many times the static class object is created? Yeah, one time, yeah. And in this, uh, and, uh, uh, no matter how many times you use, but only one instance is there, yes or no? Yes, one instance. So same thing in this case, you can consider this is your static class. Clear? Okay. So in that case, so it is not a static class, but in this case, that instance is going to be created only once and that instance is going to be used number of times, right? How many requests you send, first time it is going to create, second time it is going to reuse that shared instance. And yes, whenever you... Uh, uh, what I can say, recycle your application pool or restart your application, again, the instance is going to be created. That, that is the normal behavior of any kind of web applications. And in that case, only one instance, in that case, require, uh, request for, uh, right, when you ask, when you ask means wherever your constructor is there, if you ask, uh, right, constructor taking the I student repository means, it will create an instance. And in this case, if the same request, then it will not going to create the instance again and again. For the same request, only one instance is going to be used. Sir, can you tell? Sorry? Oh, can you tell the difference between singleton and transient again? So singleton means only one instance, right? Suppose I'm asking, suppose I'm requesting past for this index action method, one HTTP request will come. Again, once I get the data, I'm calling this get student details method, another uh, request will come. So in this case, when the first request come, the student repository uh, class, right? That means the student repository instance is created. 
and for but when the second time the request is come right even though you are passing that instance as a parameter here the framework is not going to create the instance again it is going to share that already created instance to this controller and in the case of a transient right uh, second one is a transient first time you invoke this index action method the instance is going to be created second time you invoke this action method again the student repository instance going to be created So um, how how the uh, the object will be uh, like like it depends on the application, right? Or... Right. So, so that is what I'm going to tell next. We're going to use what? Oh. Right. So first of all, these are the three. So now let me tell you one more thing. So what are the different way to configure your method, right? So um, I I have shown you the simplest mechanism, but uh, there are other options are available. Right. Let me first explain these things. Right. So I have used this builder dot add singleton directly. You can pass like this. You can also use this uh, add type method. Right. Let me uncomment all these things. So by default, right. Uh, you can see add singleton directly. You can pass the i student repository student repository here. I'm using type. Right, add transient. If you use this generic, right, then you need to pass the type, and uh, and then also other option is there where you can specify the type of. So this is the uh, what I can say the extension method. If you don't want to use this extension method, right, then other option is there for that purpose. What you need to use, you need to use new descript service descriptor, right? Here you can see I'm using new service descriptor object to this descriptor object i'm passing the first parameter as i student repository second parameter sorry i student repository and second parameter as a, the class right the concrete class name and in this case if i'm not specifying anything then by default it's going to be single but the same thing right the same thing is there but if you want to make this as singleton or any other thing then you can also use the second overloaded method where you need to use the service lifetime uh, right that singleton the transient and the dot scored. This single learn method, right? Property will decide what is the lifetime of this object, right? If you open to the service lifetime, then it is clearly saying specify that a single instance of the service will be created. That means throughout the application, only one instance of the dependency object is going to be created. And scope means specify that a new instance of the service is created for each scope, right? Whenever a request comes. If you are having any controller that taking any parameter, right, uh, then for that particular request, if you are uh, redirecting from one application, uh, one controller to another for that particular request, then it is not going to create, uh, so it is not going to create a multiple object, one object for request, right? And uh, in this case, specify that a new instance of the service will be created every time it is requested. Means whenever your constructor of the class Taking a parameter of eyes, uh, what I can say, uh, that interface type, that object is going to be created, right? This is the three different lifetime of your, uh, what I can say, dependency object. Clear? Uh, sir, can you go to the previous page, uh, previous code page? Yes. Uh, here, okay. what is the difference between first and second? Okay, so, both are, uh, there, there, there is no difference. This is the normal way. Right. And to implement this, they have provided an extension method. There is no difference. So if you don't want to use this add singleton means by default, it is making your instance as singleton. And here you need to tell this thing, whether you want to use singleton, whether you want to use transient and whether you want to use this uh, service instance as scope. That what you need to tell this explicitly. If you are not telling anything, then by default it is singleton. And here they are provided this uh, extension method, which will make your work easier. Here you do not need to create an uh, this new service descriptor type of all this thing. You can directly pass the interface name and the object name. Both are going to be same. Uh, so. Uh, in which part of .NET framework is creating an object and holding an object? Uh, can Sorry? be able to get which part of .NET framework will create an object? So this, uh, this is the internal asset. This dependency by okay. default, this is going to be held by this i service collection, right? If you go to this i service collection, it is a i service collection, and this i service collection, it is going to contain all these objects. 
right and you can access them in your room practically i can't show you this thing because this is internally implemented by the framework by set so dependency injection design button provided inbuilt support in dotnet core that uh, thing i can't show you practically because this is the framework related things okay uh, sir so previously someone it. some yeah Thank you, sir. Previously, someone was asking one interface has a two different implementations. So, during the uh, by using um, in dependency injection, can we uh, we can use only one implementation at uh, at a time, right? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Suppose see, see that that basically is they might be asking. So suppose uh, mm -hmm. run them. I want to choose whether mm -hmm. I need to use a dependency injection one or two. How uh, right for that same for the same service class? I how I can decide which uh, particular uh, repository I want to use at runtime. If that is asked, then you can do that conditionally. Right. For example, here you mm -hmm. can write some condition a. Some value is there, right? If some value, okay. some, some value, and mm -hmm. based on the condition. You can decide whether you need to use student repository or whether you need to use student text repository. That's possible. Yeah. Thank you. Right. But but uh, don't think that at the same time you can use two different repository. Conditionally, you can decide, but mm. uh, you can't use two. If you use two, uh, mm. as, uh, as you already discussed, the second one will take the priority. Okay. Clear, guys? Sir, you said singleton instance is created only once, and whenever the application resets, uh, uh, that will uh, that will that instance will be killed. How about this uh, transient and the scope, sir? Can you give a like transient. example? Uh, as as I told you, this is there any link between a singleton means once, transient means what? Whenever the request comes, the object is going to be created. And that is also same in the case of add scope. Whenever the request comes, the object is going to be created. Each time you send a request, the object is going to be created each time. Right? But for, but the difference between them is what? The difference between them is that if the request is for the particular request, if I am executing two different controller, right? Then in that case, if the two different controller using the same iStudent repository, then the object of this uh, student repository is not going to be created twice. In that case, only one time. But if you are using transit, then two times the object is going to be created. Clear? Yes. And because see, this is not uh, right. That's why I'm saying now design pattern is important. If you are, if you do not worry about design pattern, then it will be very difficult for you to understand the concept. If you do not, if you do not know what is a request, how the server sends the request to the client, right? How the client uh, client make a request to the server, right? Um, first of all, you need to know what is application pool. Anybody having uh, idea what is application pool? What happens when we recycle the application pool? What happens when we stop the application pool? Right? We should know all these things. And in that case, add singleton means what? Only one object is going to be created, no matter how many requests comes to your application. In And in add transient and add scope, each time you request for the application, definitely the instance is going to be created. But based on the based on what you use, it might be sorry, using the same instance multiple time within the same request or for multiple time, multiple requests for the same request. Right. If you are using add transit and if you are moving from one controller to another controller for processing that particular request, and if that controller taking I student repository, then how many times the constructor taking the I may uh, write uh, that many number of times the instance is going to be created. But in the case of add scope, only one instance, right? For that particular request. Again, you request, again the instance is going to be created. Clear, guys? Yeah. Yes. So in this case, what I'm using, I'm using, uh, right, uh, the, uh, I'm using the dependency injection design pattern, and here I'm injecting the dependency object using the constructor, right? So is there any other mechanism? Can I inject the object using uh, other approach? Like uh, as you know, uh, in .NET, right, we can inject uh, the uh, in .NET framework, we can inject the object in three different ways. Right. What are the op options? Constructor dependency injection, method dependency injection, as well as a property dependency injections. Right. Now, if you want to uh, use 
uh, um, right, what I can say, if you want to use uh, this uh, constructor injection, that is ULN file. This is the most preferable approach of using the dependency injection design part. But apart from this, other option is there, that is method dependency injection, right? So you can see what I'm using. So now I'm commenting this one. Right. I'm commenting this one and I'm using this book. So in this case, I'm using method dependency injection. That means the dependency object I'm passing to the method. Right. So in this case, I'm passing the dependency object to the method, right? How you can pass? So for that purpose, you need to use this form service and iStudent repository. So in that case, what will happen now as you are using this form service, the dependency injection container will contain, uh, will inject the dependency object to this uh, uh, parameter. And the same in this case also. So in this case also, as, as you can see in previous example, we are injecting the dependency object using the constructor. So that's why that is called as a constructor dependency injection. In this case, I'm, using, I'm injecting the dependency object using the method only. So in that case, I'm using, or I can say this is nothing but your method dependency injection, right? Suppose so now you might have a question, when to use a constructor, when to use in uh, this dependency? Suppose you are having one constructor, uh, one class having 10 action method. Only one action method is going to use this dependency object. It doesn't matter, uh, right? It doesn't make any sense to inject that uh, using the constructor only. Because if you inject that using the constructor, then even the request comes, right? Each time that dependency in the object is going to be created. Right? Even though that is not going to be used, but in that case, if you are in that case, you need to inject that dependency object in the particular method which need that dependency object using this form service. Right? So in that case, the constructor is not going to create the dependency object, and even the if other method are executed, they are not going to create the dependency object or they are not going to inject whichever method you want from that method only. You need to declare the uh, sentence like this in that case it is going to the uh, framework is going to inject a dependency object so now if you run the application then also you will get the same output right you will get the same output so this is another approach of injecting the dependency object and built-in support for dependency injection the property dependency injection is not provided by sp.net core if you want then you can use any kind of third party like n unit n inject right there are multiple uh, third party dependency injection container are there you can use them in your dotnet core mvc application and you can use them that fine that one that is also going to work fine so but built-in support for property dependency injection is not provided right even though right even though if you want then you can also get the dependency object manually manually in the sense i'm not going to inject the dependency object but i will request the framework to provide me the dependency object and for that purpose what we need to do we need to use this syntax, right first of all you need to get the service right and to get the service you need to use this dot http context dot request service. Once you get to the service instance, then from the service instance, you need an instance of which type. I need an instance of uh, I to uh, I student repository, and here I'm passing I student repository, and it is going to return one object, right? And I'm converting that object to I student repository type, and I'm storing that object inside a variable of I student repository. And using that variable, I can call the method. So in, the, in, in that case, for this particular type, whatever object is registered, whatever the context class is registered, right, that instance is going to be injected. And based on the type, either it is going to create the instance or it is going to use the existing object. Right? If you use singleton, if the instance is already created, then it will inject that already created instance. If you are using other approaches, and based on the scenario, if it is uh, uh, it is going to create and if you are using the same instance in other uh, uh, other methods also, then it is going to decide whether I need to create the instance again or I need to use the existing, uh, I need to use the created instance, right, based on the, 
transient or arch scope type, whatever you configure, right? And then you can get the data. So now, if you run this application, then you will get the output as expected, right? So it is not suggested, right? I'm getting the data as expected. So it is not suggested, right? It is not suggested to use this uh, add, uh, get service, service all this time. It is suggested to use the other updates, right? Where you can use from service and you can write that. Uh, I student deposited and parameter. This is not suggestible. But if your application, uh, most of the method are using the right service object, then it is always preferable to use this uh, controller approach. Clear, guys? Yeah. Right. So add singleton means uh, right in real time application you must register components. Uh, such as application wide configuration as singleton, right? Any uh, anything which you want to access throughout the application, right? Those things you need to configure as singleton, like the singleton design pattern. The data access classes like entity framework, context classes, right? You need to use them as a, a scoped because for a single request, I don't want to create the context object again and again. I want to use the same context object to get the data from the database. So in that case, if you need to use, right? Once you discuss, once you progress, right? Once you discuss the entity framework or concept, right? Then I will, then, uh, I will explain this thing, right? But for that purpose, the context object, you need to register them as scoped. And if you want to run anything in parallel, right, then you need to configure them in transit, right? As you progress, I will show you the real-time use cases of these three methods. And we have already discussed what this add singleton, add scoped, and add transit method is going to do. So what is the advantages of using this uh, uh, design patterns, right? It depends, it's this dependency injection design pattern. First of all, first of advantages is loosely coupled by using dependency injection. We can separate our classes from their dependencies, right? Uh, this result in code that is simpler to maintain and test, right? Now, there's no uh, tight coupling between the uh, client and the service, right? If you go to the home controller class, you will not find any concrete class name. Right, and uh, this is the reason why they are making the application component loosely coupled. Text billet, right? As there is no dependency rights, so currently text billet means what I can say. If you want, you can use this text repository to text your application. If you want, you can use student repository to text your application. That means unit testing is possible very uh, easily. You can uh, you can connect to one database. You can also connect to another database that is also possible but that one uh, you need to create one repository which is connecting with my sql database you can create another repository which is going to connect with the sql server database right and even you can also write some mock data where you can perform the unit test right so that is also possible extensibility means you can enhance right using dependency injection enhance the extensibility of our code by offering the flexibility to switch out to dependencies conventionally Right, right as we are using dependency object the injection design button so we can switch whether i need to use student repository or whether i need to use text student repository that i can switch very easily by just changing here and i don't need to do any changes anywhere else right that extensibility is there reusability means using dependency injection makes our code more reusable since we can conveniently share dependencies among various classes that means what now reusability means once i create the singleton instance then i can use that instance within the home controller class i can use the same instance within the student controller class that means the object is going to be shared across the multiple application which can also improve your performance of your application that means the shareability or that uh, object uh, that dependency object uh, we can we are going to reuse again and again that is what we are getting the these are the advantages what we get if we use dependency injection design pattern clear guys uh, sir i have just one question uh, what is the role of uh, ioc container here the ioc con what is the role of ioc container so this is the built-in dependency injection right if you say uh, uh, have you ever used any um, uh, uh, dependency injection container like IU Unity or N inject in your application? Any anywhere else? Not currently. Right. So, so what exactly they are pro they are providing the flexibility, right? In this case, what this IOC container is doing means the IOC container is taking all the uh, tracking all this information, right? The IOC container means he knows. 
that uh, one component, uh, one one service component is registered with me, with the name I student repository, and he known that and this student for this I student repository, what concrete class is registered and what method it is used. It is used at single turn. So this IOC con service container keeps track of this service information. Right, what is the service time? Right, for this service time, what is the concrete class name and what is the lifetime? And right? all this information is going to contain by I service IOC container and, and how many number of services you registered, right? All these are going to be tracked by the IOC container only. Mm, okay. Clear? Yeah. Right. And you can see using the services, you can configure all the things, right? All the application related as well as framework related services. And this iService collection, this is nothing but your collection, which is going to keep track the built-in uh, dependency injections, right? As well as the, what I can say, uh, any, any, this is the framework related service and this is the application related service. This service is provided by the framework and this service we created for our application purpose. So whether it is a framework related service or whether it is application related service, everything you need to configure using the services. This is nothing but your built-in IOC container, right? Container means what? Uh, simple sense. What is a container? Container means where we can put things. And in this case, in this case, this service says it's nothing but your IOC container, any dependency object you want in your application, all these things you can put inside this container. And once you put inside this container, then throughout the application, you can use them. See, at MVC, the, or whatever required. See, in this case, you might have one question that we are not providing any interface class name in this case because not required. This method is not implemented by us. As part of this method, whatever the services, right, like I logging factory, uh, I, 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 what I can, I logger factory, right, I uh, uh, web uh, environment, all these things are already re uh, uh, registered within uh, as part of this method, right? Uh, so sir, can I say the container is responsible for managing the dependency in the ASP.NET Core application? Obviously, container is only responsible managing the dependence, but that basically depends what method you use. If you use add singleton method, only one instance is going to be created by the container and going to be supplied throughout the application. Yeah. Okay. Because if you use the uh, so container is going to manage this, but how it is going to manage? You need to provide the information only now, whether I need to, I want one object that is going to be shared by, uh, for, for the whole application, or I want one object per request, that, that information we need to provide. And once you provide, then that is going to be managed by the container. Yeah, got it. Any question guys from anyone? From tomorrow, we are going to start our data uh, passes techniques, right? How we can pass data from controller action method to the con uh, view. As well as from tomorrow onwards, we are going to start discussing uh, using the model view controller project template. Thank you, guys. So, sir, this completes the overall concept of dependency injection, right? Uh, no, it is not complete. I just show you how what exactly dependency injection, right? Going further, I'm going to use this dependency injection, uh, right? I'm, I'm going to use this dependency injection throughout our post. Okay. Right? This is just the introduction. What is dependency injection? How you can configure your built-in services into the dependency injection? And further, once we progress in this course, we'll create many services. We will configure them using add singleton method, using add scoped method, using add transit method. All these things we are going to use this, right? This is not an introduction. This way we are implementing our dependency injection in, in, exactly. uh, in our project, right? Means what happens in your interview, they ask, have you implemented dependency injection in anyone who have your project see, or not, and see, how you have done right, that. right. So that, that that basically depends. See, in this case, as I mentioned, so ASP.NET Core provide inbuilt support for a dependency injection design pattern. Okay. Right. But if you are uh, giving interview, uh, right, and if you are saying I'm having experience on ASP.NET MVC or ASP.NET WebAP, then in that case, this built-in support is not available. 
in that case you need to implement the dependency injection manually and even if you want to learn how you can implement these things manually right then you need to learn them uh, from Caesar. i have written many art articles using dependency injection go and check right manually how you can implement third party container how you can implement that is also possible but in in the case of a dot network inbuilt support is there Oh, okay. but we need to, no need to write that, that, work that much of code. No need to write Sorry? that much. We don't exactly. need to write if, that if much of code. Is, exactly. If it is providing the inbuilt support, then why we should write the code? Right. Right. But, but in .NET Core, it's work. easier. In .NET Core, it's become a little easier than before. Yes, with .NET right. MS. Yeah, see, this is the reason. Because they know in what is the importance of a dependency injection design button. And they know how people are using dependency injection in ASP.NET, MVC, and OABP. And this is the reason why they make it simpler. They make they provide this inbuilt support for dependency injection. Right. Okay. Any question from anyone else? Yeah, I have one question. Yes. Yeah. So 